Sarah Champion, um, just under a month ago, there was an article that you that you contributed to that caused a lot of controversy. Do you think that the central message was actually lost? The reason that I did sort of the Today programme, Victoria Derbyshire, and the Sun article, is because I am very aware that there are children that are mm. vulnerable at the moment, and one very specific form of child abuse. Um, is by organised gangs, family groups of predominantly Pakistani men. Yes. Um, and my frustration was that unless we deal with that very specific form uh -huh. and look at the identifiers of those men, yes. um, children are still vulnerable. So for me, um, this is part of a nearly five year campaign that I've had. Sure. Uh, and it was really, really annoying that the debate became, is Sarah racist? Yeah. rather than how do we protect children. So do you think that the certain right-wing types hijacked um, what you were trying to do there? I mean, the thing was, I, I knew that, that both sides were going to hijack it. Yeah. So um, my um, annoyance is we get, uh, because we haven't dealt with that specific identifier of mm -hmm. ethnicity of these perpetrators, yes. uh, the far right then have an open season yes. on trying to um, bring their own message of to be quite honest, hatred, yes. um, Islamophobia, yeah. to what is actually a child protection issue. Okay. And in my own town of Rotherham, yes. uh, we've had EDL, we've had about yeah. 17 marches, um, and they're saying it's about child protection. It's not. It's about stirring up racial hatred. And yeah. we need to get that back. We need to own that, just as it was with Catholic priests. Yes. Um, you know, we weren't saying that that was a Christian thing. We were saying there are specific opportunities within this group of people. Yeah. So what are they and how do we get rid of them? And that's what we need to be looking at. So what real difference do you think that Jay, the Jay and Casey report have made to the victims and communities in Rotherham? I mean, the biggest thing was that when the Jay report came out, um, it, 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 it actually showed in black and white mm -hmm. the scale of the abuse. Yes. So there was no way that the um, council, that the police, that the government could sweep it under the carpet anymore. Sure. Um, in terms of support, um, not a lot. Yeah. Um, still now. Uh, still, yeah. you know, there are still uh, women who now are often mums themselves who have got very little uh, support structures around them. Well, coming, uh, coming on to that point, because uh, I read recently, I, I believe you commented on it, um, there was a survivor uh, of the of the of, of a grooming gang who has been denied yeah, yeah. compensation. Yeah. So, what are your views on that? And it's, you know, um, I assume it's something. Uh, it was actually uh, when I was door knocking for the general election. Right. Um, I met a Rotherham survivor, and yeah. she started telling me that um, she'd gone to the police, uh, they'd just got prosecutions of her perpetrators, mm -hmm. um, and yet uh, the criminal injuries advisory. No, Criminal Injuries Compensation Authority yeah. <laughs> had denied her um, compensation because yeah. she said she was complicit in the abuse, um, yeah. at, which is nonsense. I mean, that specific technicality, though, yeah. is being used all over the country as well yeah. because we're find, at Basra, we're finding um, similar stories yeah. coming out and, you know, victims coming to the social yeah. workers and, and relaying the same story. Yeah. So, and it's on this te specific technicality. Yeah. So this needs to be changed, surely. Is that um, well, I've, uh, I've, uh, so since then, I've, mm. I've been writing to the minister um, mm. and last Tuesday, you would be able to get the footage of it, but we'll send you a link. Um, I, I got the minister to agree that he would update those guidelines. Okay. But that's just on the consent bit. There okay. are two other areas that I want him to yeah. um, update. Uh, one is, um, and you all know, as part of the um, grooming process, mm -hmm. very often, the gang grooming process yes, of child yeah. sexual exploitation, very often um, they get the um, victims to carry out some sort of criminal activity. Sure. And they use it um, as leverage to prevent them going to the police yeah. uh, to discredit them. Yeah. Um, so a number of the survivors I've worked with have either got cautions or, or have been charged with something. Mm -hmm. Um, that's being used against them when it comes to compensation uh, rather than being seen as part of the grooming process. Yes. CPS get it that it's part of the grooming process yes. but this independent government yeah. agency refuses to. And the other one that I'm um, working on is uh, they've said that any um, form of um, abuse that happens under the same family roof mm -hmm. before 1979 won't get any compensation whatsoever. 
Okay. Now, if you think of the age of those people, so say mm. that they were sort of yeah. children in 79, yeah. so now they've, they've, they're sort of adults, mm-hmm. they've probably had children of their own, they've got a bit of distance, so it's quite possible that they're going to be bringing historic cases forwards, yes. um, and already they won't get any compensation for it whatsoever. Okay, so you're, you're, you're so lobbying for those three, two yeah. three areas that and, uh, need to change on. How's it going on with the, I know the consent bit, as you said, is... is consent bit, I think they're working on. Yeah. So we've, we've seen uh, some of the suggested updates. Mm-hmm. The other two bits are going to be more difficult because that, mm. that requires um, a, a degree of common sense, mm. which doesn't tend to <laughs> come easily for some people. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, coming back to uh, child sexual exploitation, um, and this is a question from a uh, social worker directly. What methods are being deployed to target the different routes into child sexual exploitation and are there now better processes to manage disclosures from young people involved? I think this is specifically about in Rotherham, if you can talk about that. Is it? Um, I mean, we've been helped enormously by Bernardo's. Yeah. Um, so uh, when uh, the J report first came out, there was a, um, a team put together of um, Bernardo's social workers, um, the police mm-hmm. and council. Um, and that uh, really helped the council and the police understand the dynamics of the crime, Mm. but also how to be um, victim focused. Um, They've also now got a um, a specifically funded centre, so they're going out into schools and making children aware of the um, the signs and what to look out for and how to report. Um, We're also blessed because um, the NSPCC have been coming in Mm -hmm. and going into our primary schools and teaching children, I was going to say teaching children about abuse, when I've gone and and sat in them, what's amazed me is um, primary school children completely understand, Mm -hmm. for example, what's appropriate touching and inappropriate touching, appropriate kissing, inappropriate kissing, but they don't know how to report it. Okay. Um, So so they've got the knowledge, um, and and so we've been teaching children, or the charity's been teaching children, how to report that, and, you know, so find um, a trusted adult, uh, ring child line, those kind of things. Where it's still starting to break down is, uh, and the cases, and remember I only see it when it goes wrong. Mm -hmm. The cases that come to me are when um, victims are trying to report, Mm -hmm. um, and their cases are complex. Mm -hmm. So for example, um, they they might first come under the radar of the social worker because they are um, taking drugs um, and they're not getting their child to school on time. Um, To, to, for the social worker to have the um, sort of the training and the understanding that actually that might be a symptom of them being a victim of abuse. Mm -hmm. Um, That, that's some, Social workers seem yeah. to have that, um, yeah. but but not always. And I think that's a still a still a shift in in understanding how a victim presents rather than a bad mother. Do you know? Yeah, I mean? no, I do. Yeah. So so that's I still think we've got those sort of grey areas, and the police are particularly bad about picking up those subtleties. Okay, um, and some of that good work that you just mentioned now—that's specifically in, in Rotherham. Is that is that correct, or is this is this something that's spread out? to all the main major cities? No, or? I'd love it to be spread out. Okay. Um, I mean, Bernardo started working, um, they were the first to sort of identify child sexual exploitation. Mm. Uh, it'd be nearly 30 years ago now. Yeah. Um, so uh, the sadness is that where there is a, um, mm-hmm. a, a big court case, mm-hmm. um, suddenly everyone goes, oh, we've got CSE over here. Yeah. So then we start putting resources in. My argument is those resources ought to be in because yes. prevention is yeah. what we ought to be focusing on. So no, it's, it's very, very patchy across the country. It's also um, very patchy what the police response is. And what I've found is it tends to be where the response is good, it tends to either be because they've had a case, so mm. they're aware of it, or an individual officer will do a, usually a woman, a one woman campaign yeah. to try and change practice. Um, but, but still things, I went out for a day with South Yorkshire Police and their domestic violence team, um, and they've got a lot better about um, when they go into a, a situation uh, of domestic violence, seeing if there are children there and yes. understanding that children could be victims of that as well. Okay. Um, but but still, it's not a, an automatic thing, mm-hmm. and I think it's the same with CSE. Mm-hmm. You know, they're called to a disruptive child who's kicking off in a cafe. Yeah. Um, they just deal with a disruptive child. That there's still not that um, understanding of mm-hmm. looking one step behind and seeing what the motivators are. 
So are you confident that the services in Rotherham are in a better place to protect children? I am confident they're in a better position, but you have to remember we're coming from a really low base. Mm. <laughs> how far do you have to go? How far, how far do you need to go? I mean, for me personally, it's two-sided, three-sided. Mm. Uh, one, it's about prevention. Mm -hmm. So it's making sure that um, the whole community understands the signs of child abuse yes. uh, in all of the various different forms. Um, two, it's about uh, not just talking about being victim focused, it's about being victim focused. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, 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 and I think that's for any crime, um, but particularly sexual crimes. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I just want people to start from believing the person as they present yeah. and then use the evidence to either prove or disprove them. Um, and I'm still not sure that that's happening. Um, and then it's about having the resources both to address the crime mm -hmm. but also enable that person to rebuild. And one of the things that, um, that I'm getting still frustrated about, but Rotherham has just started to understand this, is um, a lot of victims of um, CSE that, that I deal with now are mums. Mm -hmm. um, and there's, there's still um, an automatic assumption that, um, that the they, social workers sort of protect child yeah um, and there isn't that whole family approach that, that's that's going on uh, so they're not seeing the mum as being sort of a victim herself um, they're not seeing that actually giving support yeah you know, in many cases they've got nine months notice that she's <laughs> gonna have a child yes so for me I, I, I'd like to see a shift of um, keeping the family unit together I mean obviously with all the protections in place mm. um, but there still seems to be an automatic uh, take the child out of that environment and I'd really like that to change and when they're older mm -hmm. um, there's a very deliberate um, I don't know if attacks the right word um, that perpetrators use to try and get the child away from the family unit and put them into a care or foster mm -hmm. because they know that that child's a lot more vulnerable and and I'm I'm still uncomfortable that that there are children that are being groomed mm -hmm. that um, are, are saying that they hate their parents and they don't want to be there anymore yeah. and that, 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 um, and are being put into alternative accommodation mm -hmm. and, and that makes them even more vulnerable to being exploited from that point on. Do you think though, um, so I mean this, this, Sorry, this comes on to the subject about, so no 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 but I'm, I'm just trying to dissect it, it seems to be that you know there's a message there for social workers uh, which kind of plays into some of uh, the high mm -hmm. rates of referrals that we're seeing um, and yet when we when Basra talks with social workers we hear familiar themes that Caseloads are so hot. I mean, I know it, these are familiar. The caseloads are so high. Um, resources is so thin. Uh, professional support isn't isn't there. The time management, the, but the specific thing of there isn't enough time given for the actual cases, complex exactly. cases. So often it's the it's you know it, you can understand that social workers take the approach of safety first and refer. Yeah, yeah. And you're saying that can actually place in these in CSE in, uh, specific, uh, yeah, in more vulnerable places. Yeah. So. Does, isn't this uh, uh, something that goes back to government and 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 support and funding? Is yeah. that is there? It, it, yeah. It's, the, the, it, yeah. It always comes to the bottom line. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the pressures on social workers, mm -hmm. um, n not only um, having sort of limited resources internally to do their job, yeah. but also because all of the um, sort of the the, the early warning or the early support systems, so for example, the Shore Starts, mm -hmm. the youth yeah. services, yeah. Um, uh, uh, community um, outreach projects, because they're all going. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, the social worker is, is basically sort of the, the last resort. Yes. So it seems to be either social workers or police. Yes. Whereas, and, and so add in mental health and yeah. lack of support there, um, the, uh, the ridiculous wait times for um, CAMS. Uh, so, so, it, so rather than being able to don't worry, <laughs> rather than being able to do um, sort of subtle intervention work, yeah. it seems that social workers are brought in at the point of absolute crisis. Sure. Yeah. Um, so, so the the kind of the maintenance stuff. Yeah. Um, there isn't the time for that. No. Because you're lurching from one crisis to another. And one thing that we've we've seen at Baswa, uh, and I don't know if you if you uh, managed to catch the study. Um, Back end of July, was the uh, was an independent study, first of its kind, um, UK social workers, uh, working conditions and well-being. So we we look specifically at social workers, and um, we we helped with the study, but it was an independent study. And 
one of the standout findings was, was that over half of social workers intend to leave the profession within 13 to 15 months. Um, I don't think there's been a study to actually put a figures on that. We always knew that there were, uh, you know, stressed out social workers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. However, now that is a figure, and that figure actually rises when it comes to specifically child uh, children's services. Um, and it's the usual theme that, again, unmanageable case loads, lack of resource, professional support as well for the actual social, who, who looks after, the, uh, who cares for the carers. Um, the government isn't doing enough, is there? Nowhere I mean, no near enough. Um, and, and Do they even recognise no. that? No, I don't think so. Uh, I mean, the thing for um, me is I don't think the vast majority of people understand the level of deprivation, um, abuse and desperation that some families are trying to survive under. Yeah. And, um, and I didn't want to know, I'll be completely frank with you, I would rather have my sort of nice middle mm. class, bobbling along, everything's yes. lovely, going on holiday, da 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 da. Um, and it's almost like there's two parallel universes going on. Mm -hmm. And social workers are expected to um, live in this sort of dark, desperate world. Yes. Try and provide some sort of support um, with virtually no resources, with mm. crazy caseloads, mm. uh, and then continue day after day after day without the sort of the personal support and supervision that that a a normal mm. person yes. would expect if they had to deal with such desperate situations. Yes, and and it, it's it's awful and it's compounding and it's getting worse and worse. And and no, I mean I I've got friends that are both um, social workers and police. And, and we end up debriefing each other because we don't want to burden what reality is yeah. on normal people because I don't think they could take it. Mm. And the thing that really upsets me, I had a, um, an email uh, recently and, uh, and, and was saying that, um, but of course, Sarah, um, you, you know, you're always talking about uh, sort of perpetrators, but it's actually the social work and the police that are letting our children down. I'm like, they're not the ones abusing our... What, what mm. why, why is it... That, that social workers always end up being the scapegoat of these things. So, I mean, look historically mm. about all of the cases where, where things have gone horribly wrong. And, and yes, there are times that social workers should have stepped in earlier and yeah. this, that and the other, but could we possibly be angry at the perpetrators, mm. you know, really angry at the perpetrators, yes. and figure out and put some resources into why there are messed up people and how we prevent that from happening in the future? Well, some of the just coming on that last point, there's there's certainly a responsibility of the media mm -hmm. to to cover these angles, um, these cases rather, with more responsibility. Would you would you agree that there Completely. needs to be some sort of um, yeah responsibility taken by the media? And, Completely. Yeah. I mean, for for me, it's um, it, it seems to be whenever um, children are let down very badly, mm. um, there is then a, a witch hunt for yeah. you know who can we blame it on. You know, who in the police or who in social services can we blame it on, mm -hmm. rather than what can we do to prevent perpetrators? Yes. And, and, and we as a country have to shift, because to be quite honest, if you, um, so say if you sack a social worker, mm -hmm. um, that doesn't prevent one more future crime. If yeah. anything, it makes it more likely. Yes. So yeah, we're, we're, we, we need to be grown up about this kind of debate. Um, coming back to an earlier point you made about uh, government or the lack of government funding or, or even recognition of the of the problem, they may say today uh, that their announcement there of the the pay cap uh, lifting yep. uh, is 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 After seven years of people not yeah. <laughs> is is what. I would imagine those days is, is evidence that we are um, looking after social services and, and, and one the sector, even though they haven't mentioned social workers yet. Mm. It doesn't go far enough, though, does it? Um, I am yet to meet a social worker mm -hmm. or a police officer that goes into the job for money. Yeah. I, 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 it, mm. this, this isn't about money. The reason that they do it is mm -hmm. to um, try and protect and support people. Yeah. And n not giving them the resources to do that is, is appalling, yes. um, and that's I would say is probably the reason that you know almost fifty percent of social workers are looking to leave the profession yes. because they are unable to do their job properly. I mean, there was um, 
and speaking to some firefighters and, uh, and, and they have actually been saying to government they would rather give back sort of the, I think they're looking at a 2% rise, yeah. um, to put it into additional fire engines. Wow, um, okay. Because, you know, an extra £50 a month, yeah. uh, lovely, but they'd actually rather have the equipment to do their job properly. Yeah. So, and, and the situation that we're in is, is bonkers. And, yes. and to think that, you know, a 1%, 2 or 3% pay rise is going to solve the structural inadequacies that we have is, is naive. That resonates with Basra when we talk about talk to social workers who um, retort about the pay cap rise. That it's, it's more about funding across the board for children serv- and for services, social care services and children services, and you know, yeah, it's more about that at, um, at a wider level. Yeah. So we've already spoke about sort of government and and what they're not doing. Yeah. Um, so what more can be done to make politicians at a local and national level accountable? failings of the state to safeguard and protect children and young people in the communities that uh, that they serve? Um, first of all... <laughs> Dare to care. Dare okay. to care. Um, for me, prevention's cheap. Yes. Um, and one of the things that I've been working on a lot, uh, which came out of Dare to Care, which was um, I got about 50 different charities, mm-hmm. academics, survivors, yeah. uh, campaigners, and said to them, how do we prevent child abuse? Mm -hmm. And the one thing across the board that they all said was relationship education at primary school. So teaching children to respect themselves and respect others. Not only does that prevent um, sort of sexual abuse, it Mm -hmm. also uh, leads to tolerance. So hopefully uh, it will prevent hate crimes, um, all all of these sort of things that we are struggling under Mm -hmm. at the moment. the government has now accepted that and put it in the children um, and the social book bill. Yeah. So my big lobby at the moment is to um, actually get them to implement it, and we think we need secondary education. But yeah. you hit a bit of a barrier of that, you know, yesterday, I, I believe. Um, is there any indication of when this is is going to be implemented? I mean, the time frame. The problem that we have is the consultation should have been done over the summer, mm-hmm. um, so that then we could uh, do the secondary legislation, mm-hmm. so that it could get, uh, be implemented in uh, eighteen, nineteen okay. schools. Um, they haven't done the consultation yet, so we are mm-hmm. still pushing really hard mm-hmm. to um, to get the government back on track about this. Is two thousand eighteen, nineteen still a, a reasonable? It's possible yeah okay. there, it's, it's likely I would say mm-hmm. um, I mean we, we've failed children for generations yeah uh, if, as, as long as it happens if we slip another six months as long as it actually happens yes. I will accept that um, but in terms of um, sort of politicians and decision makers um, it, it is making them understand the consequences that legislation without resources to implement is just paper Sure. Um, and, and that's what, it's, it's all very well, you know, whenever the um, papers have a big story and we all go, oh my goodness, that's awful, let's legislate. Um, yeah, that's great. Uh, but unless you're giving the um, training to sure. the social workers, the resources to implement it, the um, support services around the, the resources to be able to, to you know, deliver, um, you're setting people up to fail. And, and we then have a clear conscience because we think we've legislated and we can blame social workers for yeah. not actually doing <laughs> it. But, but there needs to be that, that mindset shift yeah. that, um, that, that you have to resource things properly if you want change.